Do we have a quorum? We do have a, a, a few little procedural things to start. Um, there was an, a notice of special meeting circulated because we intended to have a meeting after the public hearing. Um, I am informed that uh, uh, to avoid the issue of abode service on all the commissioners, we would agree at this hearing to waive that requirement of abode service. So we need, would need a motion and a vote to waiver abode service of the notice of special meetings. We need to do that before we have the public session? Before we have the special meeting. Okay. We could do it now. Okay. If you would like to, would you so, so move? Okay. Second. So motion's been Second. made? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. We now have Let's a new abode. I don't care if somebody delivers it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, this public this is a public hearing. So the purpose of the hearing is for feedback on what we've done as a as a commission and just very very briefly to let you know that we did start at the beginning of our charter and we went virtually all the way through to the end. We have made substantial changes um, to several of the sections. Um, our goal here tonight is to hear constructive criticism and or praise for what we've done. Mostly praise we anticipate, but if there's issues that you have, we'd love to hear them. Obviously, we're not here to debate the issue, but members of the commission may actually try to explain why we did what we did. Um, at the, for the time being, I'm not going to limit the time that people can speak, so let's just get started and be as concise as you can, but let's <coughs> have some fun with this. Who would like to address us first? Mr. Urice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commission members. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend the Commission on a job well done. Uh, overall, I, I know you've had a lot of uh, uh, critics and cynics um, in the process, but I know how difficult the job that you have is, and uh, I, I think overall, uh, congratulations should be, should be had. Uh, there are a couple of changes that you have proposed in the Charter I think are especially good. Um, I believe putting a limit on the non-referendum bonding is uh, an excellent uh, move on your part. I'm glad you did revisit that. <clears throat> Whether I concur with the number or not is of less consequence than we would actually have a limit on that now, which I think is, is a good thing for the, for the systems Danbury. Uh, another that I think is uh, a particularly good move for Danbury is moving the terms to four years. Um, I was a little uh, hesitant about that in, at, at first, but the more I thought about it, uh, having been in both elected and appointed positions in this town, there, there is a, a big learning curve and there's something to say, be it said for a little more continuity in those positions. So I think, uh, I think that was a very wise move on your part. <clears throat> there is one section of the proposed changes I'm a little concerns me a little bit. <clears throat> Not so much the intent, but the result uh, as it's written. Uh, I have uh, in the past, both as uh, primarily as one of the council, been very concerned about ordinance, the wording of ordinances. Um, some very good ordinances have come forth between the, for this company that, and this uh, the, the council and other commissions that had great intent. And but as we know, intent is not how law is interpreted. It's not how it's supposed to be interpreted. It's supposed to be interpreted as it's written. Um, in section seven eight, there was modifications made to the assessments or the ability of the town government to assess individual property owners uh, as opposed to the general population. Um, I understand the intent behind this, this change and I think probably intent has a lot of merit. I'm not, not going to argue the merits one way or the other. But the way it was worked is pretty much, if you le read it literally, cart launch. Um, it allows the city to assess individual property owners in any instance that whatever administration is there so deems that 
that as an accessible project. It's not definitive. Whereas the sewer and water was very definitive process, very, very definitive language. This, in, in theory, it, it reminds me of my grandmother, a dear old, old lady that lived all these years in her home, and the city decided to curb her street. It did nothing for her house, but it was a value added, presumably, to the neighborhood. And she was assessed an amount equivalent to three months of her Social Security. Now, while it might not be much to somebody making, you know, a, a earning a salary, but to individuals whose, whose incomes are very limited, these assessments can be devastating. Uh, just think for a minute, what if you were without two or three months of your salary? That's how it is to people in these kind of positions. <coughs> so if there's intent to do certain type of projects in an assessment mode, let's enumerate them. Let's not write a blank check for whatever administration happens to be in the corner office on any given year. Um, the intent of the highway or public works department, all well and good. The intent of the administration, all well and good. The wording is bad. And I, I beseech you to please restrict the wording in that so that we are not, if you will, at the mercy of public works. Because we as taxpayers, we pay all the bills. No matter how much the state says we bring to your city, we send a heck of a lot more to Hartford than Hartford sends to us. So we pay 100% of our bills here. In a tough financial year, an administration could say, wow, how about all these road projects? We can put those on assessment. We don't have to put it in our budget. That could happen. <coughs> that could really happen. And that's just one little example, but that's the way this is worded now. There, there's just no restriction on really what can be assessed to the property owners. Uh, again, it's a matter of who's interpreting the value added or as it's worded. Uh, what gets assessed? Uh, it's just too broad. But again, back to the meeting. I thank you for your efforts. And overall, job well done. Uh, I think there's just that one little refinement that uh, is not a real refinement. It's a big issue for the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from any commissioners? Okay, thank you. Anybody else from the public? Lynn? Uh, first, I'd like to thank you, Carla, for coming on the show. You did a really good job <coughs> explaining it to the public. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, start off with the terms of office. Uh, of four years. I, I can live with the four years, but I am very concerned about the length of the ballot. Uh, <coughs> think of three, the, think of the three top offices, 21 councilmen, 11 Board of Ed members, nine zoning members, three alternate zoning board members, five constables, and the zoning commission. That's a total of 52 positions on one ballot every four years. I personally think it's much too much. Would you please give some consideration to splitting the ballot? For example, elect the mayor, the treasurer, the town clerk, and councilman one year, and then two years later, elect the zoning commission and the board of ed. That kind of averages it out so that there's approximately 25 on each of the two ballots. And there could be an unexpected benefit to splitting the ballot, as I suggested, if you had an ordinance or a referendum or something else that needs to go to an election, you would have something else on the ballot that would bring people out besides just the question or the referendum on bonding. And it wouldn't cost that much because you're already running a ballot. It would take you all writing it into the charter, I believe, in the beginning to get that started. But it would divide it. I mean, can you see filling in those little holes for 52 holes all the way down the ballot? It would take forever to get it done. Uh, section 3.3, I'd like to see the legislative assistant appointed by the council and approved by the mayor. I don't 
like the two branches of government, legislative and executive, being that totally combined. This assistant can always reach a council president by phone if necessary for city business. One of your reasons for doing it the other way is the council president is not uh, a, a, available, but he is by phone at all times, and they have been since I've been watching government. Number three is referendum. Uh, the number of signatures needed. I know you changed it down to 10%, and thank you very much for that. Uh, that's 3,400 signatures, and actually <coughs> it's probably going to be more because in order to sh ensure that you have enough registered voters, you've got to get approximately another four or five hundred over and above because people don't remember whether they're registered or they're registered in another town and they don't want to turn you down and it's always tested. Five percent is seventeen hundred signatures and three percent is one thousand and twenty signatures with the thirty four thousand people that are registered today. I believe it should be five percent or three percent and if any of you have ever tried to collect signatures of registered voters all three numbers are unattainable in 30 days. I've done it. It's impossible. These numbers effectively close out the voter in the process, so please reconsider this. I, too, wanted to speak to 7.8, page 27, the public improvement assessments. <coughs> I am very uncomfortable with the wording here that refers to public works or improvements. If it was added to cover private roads becoming public roads, then you should say so. I was told that that was the intent, but even if it is the intent of this commission or this administration, no one knows what a future mayor may read in this portion of the charter. Curbs, paving roads, parks, neighborhoods could eventually be charged to homes and neighborhoods. If the wording in this portion is allowed to stand please revisit it we just had our highland avenue park fixed up and if they can say oh that makes your house more valuable because you live near it and you could then advertise you live near a park they might be able to assess my house for the improvements to the highland avenue park so i'm very concerned about that uh, section 7-10 on borrowing again i feel that people are being closed out of this process 2.5 million per project that may be okay but I remember one citizen speaking before you as Commission and said even with inflation from 1977 that figure should only be 1.5 million we the public don't get to vote until the administration needs more than 5 million per year a number I feel is much too high don't get me wrong I'm very relieved you have a cap I just wish it were lower I would also like to praise you for not combining planning and zoning. I really believe the public is better served by having two times to speak before commissions. Page 31, 8.3. I believe this should not include, uh, that's, this is conflict of interest. Um, I believe it should not just include elected officials and employees, but their extended families as well. Uh, I know of several situations where other relatives of people that worked here got jobs uh, in companies doing different things for the city, and I'm uncomfortable with that. I appreciate your doing the periodic review uh, of the uh, charter. I think that's an excellent idea so that it doesn't go 30 years before we do it again. So uh, I also sincerely want to thank you for all your hard work on the Charter, and that includes you, Mr. Bradshaw. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments? Anybody? Somebody else like to address us? I would say a few words anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, Greg Williams, uh, 104 Franklin Street. This is my f I've watched several of these meetings um, on the tapes that uh, you all were able to provide the public. Um, thanks, Ms. Waller, for doing that. So I just wanted to commend you first and foremost for spending an enormous amount of time. I'm sure this has been fun. 
um, and exciting in some instances. Um, like me, I'm a concerned citizen, like the few that are here, and probably a lot of folks that probably talk about it in town but just aren't able to get here. But uh, some of my concerns, of course, these uh, people have already eloquently have stated um, in retrospect at borrowing. I think, I think it's a little bit too much money for one individual um, or one administration to handle in one aspect. Um, the legislative assisted position, I think, blends between executive and the legislative branch. I think that, should, that person should be in a sense that you all have spoken a learning curve. You should probably hire somebody and that should probably go through civil service that you have the appropriate person to do the appropriate job versus um, somebody who's appointed who may or may not be um, a fit for the position and maybe more in a political aspect. Um, just, I, I do believe um, um, in the aspect of assessing uh, through public works um, as far as improvements <coughs> in, in the sense of uh, assessing the homeowner. I think that, um, that, that that's something that you all should look at. Um, I want to go back. I'm sorry I'm jumping all over the place, but, but in retrospect of the council um, and the legislative assistant, um, I do believe that the council should have more of a, what's the word, a community outreach perspective in their wards because they are elected through the constituents who inhabit their wards and it seems as soon as they get elected here and in the processes of the council they kind of get they kind of get uh, uh, their voice kind of gets silent and it, and it gets to be um, bubbled up I'd say in a sense to the few or the or the, the many that have power that make decisions in a sink I do believe that the council, in a sense of having responsibility for the legislative but uh, legislative assistance budget or salary, should constitute the council having a budget to operate and do the things that they need to do as the legislative branch for the city of Danbury. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. I commend you guys again for doing this hard work, and thanks again for letting me speak. Um, hold, hold on a minute. Yes, before you run away. Um, uh, the last point you made is you, you think the council needs its own budget? Yes, uh, I, I do, because if, if you're going to have a legislative assistant, in my opinion, um, that's working solely for the council, and that person, as it state, states now, is appointed, well, we as a city are still paying that individual, and they work primarily for the council. Um, I, I, speaking from the past and being on the council myself, um, it, it seemed that I worked, and many other council people before me, during me, and probably after me, worked very hard in getting votes in their particular wards or districts. But then as soon as they get here, um, you know, it, it just seems that they, you don't hear a lot of what the council people do in their communities in order to reach out to their constituents who voted for them um, in a sense of being that, 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 that elected official that, that, that is in contact with the public. Um, that everyday person who inhabits their ward. So I do feel that the council should impose a little bit more power in governing themselves and having the people or the resources um, to actually do what they, what we elect them to do, I think. Okay, so the follow-up question is, so you'd be in favor of the council hiring? Uh, the I would be in favor system. of the council hiring, or in a sense, <coughs> hiring uh, a legislative assistant <coughs> with the approval of the mayor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Any other members of the public that would like to address us? Seeing none, we'll close the public session, the public hearing. Thank you all. Your input has been valuable throughout the process, so it's, it's been fun. Now, I think I need to call to order our special meeting. That's Is that right. I now call it to order. Mr. Gottschalk, did you want to start off our special meeting? Do you want to address us with where we are? Sure. You should have now before you this uh, uh, summary sheet mm -hmm. that I put together in an attempt to at least indicate what kind of changes the Commission proposes with respect to each section that you uh, touched. <coughs> and you should also have a copy of the draft report, third version. <coughs> and in that, we may Excuse have me, Rick, we say third version. Oh, yes. Is this the one that was handed out at the last meeting? No. It's been the changed one? since then? Yes. yes. It's yes. been changed to reflect the modifications you made at the last meeting. Okay. And I think Carlo sent it around. 
It was it was sent around. Or, or, or I sent around. Or Peter sent it around. Yeah. But there are copies here. Good. And uh, did you get a copy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think okay. I did. December 29th. Okay. This has changed. This, the last one I got. Yeah, they're all dated December 29th. Just okay. right. The last one okay. was the one that we got at the last yeah. meeting. So, is that 24? This is draft yeah, this, rate. This has come around, right. And also, I will. Did you get the proposed changes? I just got the proposed changes. Okay. Yeah. But I need the new Here's so yeah. another one coming. How will we know? Which is that draft compared to? I think you put a three on it. This is three. Put a three on it. Yeah. I want to know this is. All right. Well, let's this see. one seems much thicker than this one. What am this I missing? Oh, I don't know. It oh. yeah, <laughs> could be the format. And just might, for the commission been, no, wait a minute. This the one I handed yeah. to you for today's meeting is copied on both sides. Oh, and perhaps you. you printed the other one from the computer. You got that oh, right. Oh, oh, my oh I love that. Like Paper like safe. Oh, well, then. I needed one of these. And, and for the commission members, if you would, I also made up, I copied Peter's list of all the changes. We made it a little more user friendly. Um, in addition, I've handed you a letter that, I, that I'm at least proposing at this time to send to the mayor and to the council. Um, that again, most of the wording came from, the, from Rick with English corrections made by a former English teacher and member of the commission, Mrs. Mead. I can help you to determine what drafts you have. I'm working with the version that you got last month. Or was it this month? It remember. was this month. This month. No, it was, no, it was right before it was getting done. Yeah, we were. Well, we were. 11.24 was the last right. one. Yeah. Yeah, because I have and an 11.22, and then I've got one that I printed out on 12. December 29th. No, this is all this is Twice. Twice. Except I have them. Right, yeah, yeah, I so have this So I've got two that could be the final. Well, let's, let's, quick, let's go to the, the last change you made. Yeah, let's quickly just review the four, the four sections that were changed based on your uh, request of me last time. And those, all of the, all four of those changes should be reflected in the copy that's on the table and the copy that Peter, Peter sent to you by email okay. a few days ago. The sections that are involved are, I'll just read them out and we'll go back to them. They're 2-6, 3-1, 3-2, and 3-4. So, If you, um, <coughs> what? <laughs> um, if you open the, car, the the version that I'm offering today and turn to 2-6, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what, what happened there was that uh, there was some language that related to how vacancies get filled. Right. And, and, and once they were filled, for how long they were filled, and so that, if you, if you take a look at 2-6, see the, um, the deletion in there? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's the result of what you did. And, and also, there was some language that we had added that we then scrapped, so that's no longer in there. But, but if you were to look at the current version of the charter and compare it with 2-6 <coughs> as proposed tonight, what you, the change you would see is change 40 days to 60 days and delete that that strike through language and in effect the current charter then is 2-6 is basically five lines whereas the previous 2-6 was 12 or 15 lines because it had language in there regarding the biennial municipal election right okay so yeah. then this means this is version 2 Yeah. yeah, it seems to be changed everywhere okay, else. Okay. Okay. Towards the bottom of version 2, yeah. in, in section 2-6 of version 2, mm -hmm. about four lines from the bottom, it had in capital letters, in accordance with the provisions of section 2-2B. Of this, yes. Yeah. That's been eliminated. Got it. All right, okay. so that's 2-6. That's mm -hmm. the change you made in 2-6. Yes. Then the next change you made in 3-1 was 
to, uh, very appropriately, delete that comma after such compensation, because it had no business being in there, no. even though it was in the charter. <laughs> Okay. You know, you feel things. Yeah, it was grading. That was a nasty comment. I don't know what they were thinking. Yes, it made no sense. No, here. really. No. Good. Okay. So that was wasn't good work. elegant. All right, Carla. Next is black time versus Peter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, take all the rest The next section that you modified last time was 3 2. Yes. And what, what you did last time was to delete the word biennial. That's about uh, five lines from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then you, you deleted some language that you had previously added that, again, related to filling of vacancies and how long that filling was good for, until the next election or what. And so if you were to look at version two, the one that you got before tonight, you'll see you would see some some capitalizations about five lines from the bottom, to, from ten to five lines from the bottom. <coughs> At said election uh, election, the office shall be filled for the remaining unexpired portion of the term. That language mm -hmm. that's been eliminated. So what you see in th in the current proposal that you got tonight when compared to the existing charter is what you see here in this 3-2. A lot of changes. We eliminated uh, the third Monday in November because that was bad language. Replaced it with what's been practiced, which is uh, the, the, uh, the organizational meeting occurs <coughs> the first Monday of December when they choose a president. Uh, and it goes on to describe what happens if the mayor is unable to perform the duties of his office. Okay. Okay. Yep. And the last section that you changed is 3 4. And there was a typo uh, towards the maybe 10 lines from the bottom general law or specials laws. That was bad. So we eliminated the S after special, uh, after uh, special, not specials laws. And that's it. Okay. Did draft two and draft three, did we correct the staggered election for the board in, in yes. draft two? In draft two? Uh, no, I believe that so, was. So the one presented tonight includes that change. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. That's in 2 2. Yes, that's in 2 2. Uh, let's see. C. It's in there. 2-2 A2C. Mm -hmm. And what I had to do in order to get everything to jibe was to uh, make interim two-year terms to get everybody on the same in the same mm -hmm. sequence. So that would become everybody would be on the same cycle beginning in 2015? Correct. <clears throat> okay, we have our draft. <laughs> yes, sir. Is that what we said? So in 2015 there will be no more stagger. Right. Right, the stagger will be gone. Okay. Based on the public hearing and, and where we are so far, does, are there any other changes that anyone wants to look at at this time? Are we going to 
discuss public input, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> and now is the time to discuss public input. <coughs> you know, I, I would just like to address the uh, concern about bonding. I, I think uh, we have heard testimony from a uh, number of people, and I think what we have finally concluded was probably uh, the right um, the right process. Whether the dollar amount, I think that can be debated uh, back and forth. Uh, I believe the dollar amount is consistent with with the goals and the objectives of the capital plan and what is needed. And I do believe that the cap does restrict uh, any administration from uh, just running away and, and, and without getting public, uh, you know, input or, or approval for bonding. So I am I am very comfortable with what the commission has come up with on the bonding piece of it. Okay. Any other comments? On bonding? No. Um, or any other section of the charter? I was I was confused over what um, Mr. Juris was saying about section 6-8. 7-8? Mm -hmm. About the assessment. I was concerned about I, I Why don't we take take a look at that? <clears throat> we changed sewer and water to say public improvement. Well, the idea was originally that I think mostly that was to expand that to allow for uh, private roads to be paved and then taken over by the city, and that would be assessed to people. But there seems to be a question of how broadly is that written and do we want to look at that and tighten that up we wanted it obviously to be more than just sewer and water projects mm -hmm. because obviously if you're on a septic and they put mm -hmm. a sewer line by they will assess you for the cost of, of mm -hmm. going by and the, uh, and the intent initially was to uh, expand that mostly for private roads so the question is is the language too broad and could it be tightened up and should it be tightened up Mr. Gottschalk. The reason why I propose that to you is because there are ordinances on the books that are based on current state law that allow the Common Council to assess property owners for benefits, special benefits to their properties for public improvements generally. Um, and it seemed unusual to me that there was a charter provision that addressed public improvements with respect to sewer and water, but not generally, even though under the ordinances that was possible. And so, frankly, I viewed it as a matter of being consistent. Uh, here you have a section that allows for assessments. You might as well cover the subject. Uh, it is not necessary. If you choose to just eliminate all of the changes we made to 7-8, the ordinance is still there. It's been there for 20 years and nobody's assessed anybody for curbing. They could have. But it's rather difficult. In, in fact, you know, you are right, uh, Mr. Chairman, that what comes to mind are these private roads and there was one occasion in which the council considered a special assessment attributable to uh, costs of improving a private road to bring it up to city spec so it could be accepted into the public road system. And I think w there may have been a constellation of reasons why that didn't happen. But one of them was that in order to create this assessment process, uh, for in, in that context, you would have to decide out of the hundred dollars it costs to do this, what portion is specially benefits property owners and what portion benefits the public generally. And, and I don't think they could do it. Uh, I mean, they could have done it, but it, it has no clear answer. And everybody really feels more comfortable if there's a clear answer. So, you know, I don't know whether the use of this section, if it is ever used, uh, would be limited to private roads or whether it might be uh, catch basins and curbs. 
I don't know. Street lights. Street lights. It's possible. It's possible. Stop signs. You know, I, I, I don't think, and, and the next, you know, the next attorney will give you a different answer, but I don't think that you would be able to say that that stop sign specially benefits <coughs> these, these homes. Uh, could you come up with some public improvement where there was a special benefit? My answer to you, without having any particular one in mind, is yes. But, but just to get us back on the same page, this was not intended to expand on what's already in existence. It was just meant to put all of what's possible in one place. Question. Mr. King? When we were discussing this, I was under the impression <clears throat> that um, this road would apply if, for example, in a new development that uh, the homeowners wanted the city to come in and pave the road, that uh, that's when this provision would be used. They could go in and do that and charge the residents for the cost of that. Would all the residents have to agree to that, or would only a majority of the residents have to agree to that? Well, there's a couple of steps in the answer to that question. The first step is that new developments, uh, this wouldn't apply to new developments, because one of the conditions of getting subdivision approval, for example, mm -hmm. is that you uh, create your roads, you bring them up to city standards, and then you give those roads to the city. So the, presumably, when the city gets them, they don't need to be paved. They've been paved. Okay, bad example, but there is a one in mind. I don't know the name of the street. It, it's off of... Uh, Middle River Road, I believe, that uh, there is a development out there. The road is in terrible shape. And Drive, it's close close to downtown. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you go under the Rose Hill Railroad trestle, and it's right on the right as you go up the hill. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a private road, practically downtown, or is downtown. And it's, it's, uh, it's a bear. It's been a bear for a long time because the... Um, uh, the road right of way is uh, uh, in conflict with 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 pieces of private property. Um, decks are overhanging in the wrong places, and so it's it's been an orphan for a while. But eventually, it'll get resolved. And is it possible that those improvements will be um, uh, assessed to the property owners who live there? It's possible. Will it happen? I think it's unlikely because that should have been dealt with in a different way. But the answer to this, the second half of your question is that uh, once the Common Council chooses to do this thing, whatever it is, and drive, they can do it without the approval of any uh, percentage of the population okay. by vote of the Common Council. They can do it even without this being done? Without they can do it under existing law. Under existing yes. law. Yes, so long as they can figure out what that special benefit is. It's really, you take two snapshots, two financial snapshots, one before and one after, that's the limit of your, uh, of your special assessment. So and they, don't cre they don't, by the way, <coughs> they don't arrive at the number that way, but when it gets to court, if there's a challenge, that's what the court would do. Okay. Then there isn't any increase in power of, a, of the Common Council by adopting this in a charter versus what exists currently? None whatsoever. Okay, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions or comments? Does anybody want to make a motion regarding that issue? Seeing none, I guess we will keep that language as is and move on. Any other issues that you would like to review?
Maybe a couple more minutes, or just okay. going over what people said. Take your time, yeah. and, and if you want, we can go through each person and what they said. If you would like to do that, but go, Mr. King. Yeah, I'm sensitive also to the size of the ballot. I think it's a it's a it's a valid observation that it's long, but you know I think that the process of of what the state has adopted makes it cumbersome. The fact is that we have a number of offices. Uh, <coughs> to be elected and um, staggering and has some advantages and some disadvantages. I think to try to sort all of that out at this late hour would be a cumbersome task. Um, and, I, and I'm not sure that we would come up with anything different. We have discussed all of these changes pretty thoroughly. And uh, I, I wished it were shorter, uh, maybe uh, a recommendation to the Common Council that, that an overall organizational review of city employees as well as elected officials may be undertaken by an, another commission and perhaps other changes in the future made to the Charter to, to manage that. But I think to reopen that at this late point, I'm, I'm not sure that we would come up with anything that would feel any more comfortable than what we have today. It's, it seems to me that if we were to go say stay with biennial elections, we would still have 45 or 47 exactly. names on the we ballot. Still have a huge the, ballot. All we would exactly. lose is the staggered Board of Ed people. So Either I, that or we go back to, and, you know, cut the size of the council, council and that's the been, commission. That's been exactly. recommended by somebody exactly. in the room. Exactly. We can do that. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have We have done... We have a, well, we have a, is there a suggestion that the president of common council not exist? Is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get away that quick. <laughs> I think we could solve the length of ballot by putting the party lever back, so. Oh. It's a uh, little hard to do we'll on those optical scans. strike that from the public <laughs> record. <laughs> Anything else yes, that someone is. would like to discuss? Paul's looking into some things. Mary or Mary? Um, I, I was just had a question about because I don't remember unless I missed it. You know the, the part of filling the vacancy of the mayor? Section 3-2. Section 3-2. Mm. Okay. Specifically the mayor. Just, it says, except in the event of vacancy of the officer mayor. Now, refresh my memory. What it means that if the mayor is not available to do his job, the president of the council then becomes the mayor. That is true. Yes, That's and what, 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 explain to me why that happened. I mean, we already have an assistant to the mayor. It's current. Mm -hmm. It's current. Current, right. current charter language. Current right. charter is the president of the council. So I'm only asking because somebody asked me, and I said, you know, now that I think about it, I don't remember. Yeah, you know, we, does we, it have to be an elected official to do it, or could it be? I mean, because some communities do have deputy mayors. They have, you know, assistant yeah. to the mayor. Why wouldn't the assistant to the mayor just take that, assume that? Possession appointed. Yeah, position. that's not. Oh, well, it's appointed, yeah. But it would have to be then. I guess that's my question. It has to be an elected person to I, take over the mayor's. Exactly. I mean, it would make sense that the one who knew more of what would be the assistant. No? I mean, the president of the council then has to resign. Mm -hmm. Lose a vote, maybe, or what? I mean, that. That's correct. Mm -hmm. that's but I mean, that's just, that tradition follows with what the line of succession. Uh, ultimately reaches into the legislative branch at the pr at the national level as well where the right. speaker of the house is in the line of succession so i mean there's a long tradition of filling elective offices with the next highest right. so elective I, I guess official. my question is that's what we're following is that we're following what? tradition is, more than anything else yes and one of the complications of the four-year term is, is that maybe right. the president of the council don't, doesn't want to give up his day job or her day job right, and become the mayor of the right. city. That would be my point. In, Why would you? you in which case we would have some kind of a crisis if we had a new president of the council, so that the old president right. that became mayor could resign. And but I could. This looks like a lot of work for. It, I mean, a lot of. We work. have not addressed that, other than to maintain the current procedure. And we've laid, layered on the complication of four-year terms. It's almost unfair to have, if you were the president of the council, it's almost unfair to say, okay, now you're going to be the mayor. <laughs> you we make him quit Hello. Hello. <laughs> I don't know about you. But would the president of the council <laughs> like to address that? that? No. <laughs> president of the council, would you like to? Yeah. <laughs> but, 
I mean, it just, as we had talked about this a little bit, and I'm thinking more about it. I never thought about Where's it. Where's the balance there? Because now you've got somebody who's been presiding as the president of the council and say, okay, tomorrow, well, now I guess you're going to be the mayor tomorrow. Yeah. And that's. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, 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 but I don't know how many people would you say, yeah, okay, I'm going to do that. Well, you know, Mary, in New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, just by example, they do not have a lieutenant governor, and they've had this problem, and the uh, uh, Senate pro tem, the, the, the leader of the New Jersey State Senate, who was of the opposite party, became the governor. So, I mean, that's, that's how it works. So it's, it's a tradition across the country. Yeah. It's imperfect. Doesn't mean it's right just because it's tradition. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think it would be a surprise. <laughs> no, I know when they he, know that. Yeah, they when they accept when they come the, on that job. Yeah, exactly. They, but as you said before, in a lot of things, being tradition and or like you said before, oh heck, for twenty years nobody did anything about it. So why do you want to think about it? You know, don't worry about it. It's not going to happen. Twenty years, they haven't done anything about it. But there you know was. I mean, it just doesn't. What would you propose in its place? I, could we propose um, giving him an out if he didn't want it and allow another member of the council? <laughs> Who's the next highest elective office? Mr. Chairman, you got to. Or would we yes. just make the man quit his job? I'm just Mike for a second. One of the things that, I, that may help you just understand probably why this is done with the president of the council is that the public elects the 21 members of the city council. The 21 members of the council elect their president. So the mayor's assistant, or the people that work in the mayor's office are appointed by the mayor. And I not, that. not elected by the voters of the city. So I think what's happened is it gives, the, it gives some credence to the election process that the president of the council would succeed the mayor if there were something to happen to him. And there better not be anything to happen to him in the next two years. You understand. So, well, um, then that but, would... But that was my question before. Does that person who takes over that position have to be an elected person? I, if that's I the case, then you be. don't have anywhere to go but the council, obviously. Yeah. Right? Or there's another spot in between. That. My only part of that, and that is, oh, yeah, the treasurer. Um, like you say, what happens? Did we come up with a plan if they said, no, I can't do it? Was that when they were going to go out and do another election? We have we no provisions in here special. for special elections, which could be some option, I guess. But currently, you hold on a minute, Put a provision in here. Don't go away. Don't go away. I'm glad you said it be selected by yep. the nominee. Mr. Gottschalk. What would happen <clears throat> if the president were called upon to assume the position of mayor and felt at that point unable to fulfill the duties of that office is that the sequence of succession would occur again. After the president became mayor, the council would choose a new, new president. president. The new mayor would resign and the new president would become mayor. And where would the new old mayor go? Back to the council? No, he would resign. resign. He would resign. So he wouldn't be the president of the council anymore. He would be, he would be, he he would be free as a bird. How about the current yeah, scenario? Um, I believe the current president works for the city. And he would be in a position of being the almost new mayor having to approve his own retirement. No. no. Doesn't he have to apply he for have jobs. early retirement? I think he has to resign from his position of employee to be a full-time mayor. And his... You see, that's my there, confusion. This is the succession. We have a succession. Is like, isn't there a retirement what? board that he would have to go before? Yeah. Well, if I could break, also, sure. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be voting on necessarily on things that would do with my raise. The council would be doing that. If I were to, if I were to say I were to take a leave of absence from the fire department, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. The contractual issue would not be voted on by myself if I assume the duties of the mayor. The council okay. would vote on those. Okay. It would not be me. And if if uh, retirement were in order, mm -hmm. it might or might not occur depending on the age and mm -hmm. condition of the new mayor. Mm -hmm. But if that occurred, as you know, 
as sometimes happens, people develop conflicts. They're not universal conflicts, they're conflicts relating to a specific issue. Like if Joe wanted to retire, he's, pre he's mayor, and he wants to retire from the fire department, he's going to go to that pension board meeting as mayor and decline to vote because he has a conflict. But I also, but I also wouldn't be able to be denied my benefits if I was retiring out straight or just asking for a straight retirement. Mm -hmm. I, I would naturally recuse myself from the vote, but mm -hmm. there would be nothing that would preclude the uh, pension board from voting on my retirement. Mm -hmm. So is, we is, have is nobody there, else it, in line of succession. We have no... That's it, the only thing there is. Unless we choose to address it. And I will remind the commission that I... We can still pre we can present this to the council, mm -hmm. and they may give us some direction and say, four, "We love four-year terms." If they don't like four-year terms, it almost doesn't matter because it's a two-year time period. With the exact same succession issues, just two years versus four. If they decide that they like the four-year terms, they can tell us how they would like succession planned. We can come back and put it in our new draft. Or they may just say, go back and come up with some succession plan that, that is better than what you're doing currently. Because it seems to me it's just an issue because suddenly it would be a four-year burden for somebody well, as opposed to well, just be, a two-year. It, it just seems that there should have been something, it just seems like there should be something more simple and clean and clearer than all the bop, bop, bop and down the, you know, yeah. well, the succession routine. But not having a vice mayor. Right. or a deputy mayor, we don't really have a clean line of succession short of the president of the council. So do you want to address that now, or do you want to address that one with a little more input from the council? I, I believe council? we discussed <coughs> special elections, yes. that we would well, we do did, a special election, I and I think we decided that was not the right direction to go, with me being right, the that. commissioners. Okay. <coughs> Anything else about this? Just one more. Yes, Mayor. Wouldn't it be kind of unfair to say to Mr. Pre the council president, um, you can either take the job or you're, fired, or you're going to go back and be an elector now? Because if you don't take the job, it, you have to take the job and then resign the job so the next guy can take you're the out. job. And then you're out. And, and he see, might be the, the guy process. on the council who yeah, has, uh, clean, has the yeah. most vote. You know, the people and perhaps the, the most people wanted yeah. on the council. And I'm, you, know. you want to address that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. <laughs> you probably don't want to you, you become... <laughs> <laughs> but you can't become mayor because you really can't afford to give up your real job. Right. So you become mayor, the council elects a new president who can be mayor, you now do the right thing and resign as mayor so that the next person can become the president, or can become the mayor, and now you're not a council member any longer. Okay. And it doesn't seem like you've been treated so fairly for taking um, one for the city. Well, you know, the, the thing I would have to say is that I would have to weigh the decision on what is more important to me at the time. Is my employment, my continued employment, <coughs> more important to me, or would my employment as the mayor be more important to me? Um, it's it's sort of the same situation I'm in now, knowing that if something would happen to the mayor, I would have to. You would have a difficult have decision to make. Have a difficult decision. I have to make the decision of whether I want to do that, and I've made that decision twice now since the. Uh, since Benny Nolan had retired and I assumed the duties as president, there was a tremendous amount of discussion that had come up in that with myself and with the mayor and with the corporation counsel's office about just specifically this. And it, it would just come down to, I'd have to make a decision. The tough, yeah. Do I want to become the mayor of the city of Danbury if something were to happen to Mark, or if I wanted, if I did not want to. And who appoints the replacements for the council members? The town committees of the respective person that re resigns. So that if you, became mayor, Correct. there would now be an opening that you could apply to the town committee to be named back right. to the council exactly. theoretically. And here's a, here's right. a perfect example. Um, Councilman James Johnson just got appointed as the city's fire marshal. He will have to resign. He will be resigning the city council, and he will be sending a letter to the Republican town committee saying that he has will resign his seat in January and that they will be in their process of looking for a replacement. And then the replacement comes before, and correct me if I'm wrong, the replacement comes before the council for a full vote once the name is recommended by the town committee, by the respective town committee. So the name is recommended by the town committee, but the council, council. has the ultimate authority. Correctly. And if they decide, so if you made this loop, 
you became the mayor, resigned it. If the town committee didn't renominate you, could the council still appoint you? Is it open? Board of Ed, anybody can apply and the Board of Ed chooses, although there is a town committee recommendation. Is the council the same? I, I don't know if the town committee could reappoint me. No, but uh, I don't know if the council could reappoint me without the town committee's right, the town endorsement. Committee would have to make the recommendation, which is a possibility the town committee can make the recommendation to, re to put me back on the council if I choose to come back, on, if I choose to come back on the council, and then the council would vote on it. Okay, so there would be a way back. It's yeah. just you would have to make those arrangements ahead of time, Mr. Council. The involvement of the, the individual town committees is a matter of courtesy, not a matter of no question. It's not required okay. by two dash six, as you as you know. Got it. Okay, as a requirement for your taking over as president of the Common Council at that time when you were elected. Do you have to agree that you will fulfill all the responsibilities of that job, including succession to the mayor? I don't know that the succession to the mayor is a required responsibility. It's, it's understood in the charter that the president of the council will assume the duties of the mayor. So that, in, in effect, makes it a required. Mr. Gatchuk, you probably to the best of his ability. To the best of my ability. Certainly a requirement of the of the position. Right. Of not of the individual. individual. You know, I imagine he swears to uphold to the best of his ability, That's what but I was wondering. it's the position that right. is the requirement. Whether that position is filled by individual A or B, I think. Correct. Because when I when I take the oath of office, I take the oath of office as a councilman. But then okay. it's the members, twenty one members of the council, twenty members of the council that elect their person as their president. So. Okay. Wouldn't it be a tragedy if something happened to the mayor and then our president didn't want to take over and we lost the two highest elected officials? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a tragedy? Couldn't we do something, I can't think of anything more eloquent to say than give him the right of first refusal. I can't no. think of anything more than that to say. And where does it go after that? Who's next? Who, who then becomes? Mm -hmm. The council right. decides who's The council who's, decides. That's yes. correct. Which well, is the most currently what's in place. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I think that that would be the but way. But you would remain the president. You wouldn't have to resign and leave. Right. I think actually the election of the president by the body mm -hmm. is just, I think it's a good way to go. I think it's, I think it's probably prudent to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. let, them, let them 20 members, 20 members of the council decide who the president's going to be. Mm -hmm. Rather than... If I were to, if I were to uh, refuse the office of mayor, have them have to keep me as president. They, they may choose they don't want to do that at that point. It's mm -hmm. their decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. You're right. So, but they could re-choose you if they... If the, if yeah. the town committee decided to re-nominate me, they certainly could re-choose me to come back on the okay. council. They could certainly re-choose me re to be the president again. It's less than perfect, but I don't it, see. But it's functional. Yeah. I think it's functional. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else? Mr. Chairman, no, I have to address something. We have lots of notes over here, everybody. Okay, yeah. Paul. No, I really just want the one issue. Um, section 3-11, mm -hmm. which is the referendum petition percentage, which is on the side of One of the, it seems to me when you look at, look at the changes that we've made as a whole, we've taken away from the voters. We've taken city government away from the voters a bit and made it more <coughs> comfortable for, and I, I don't want to mean this disparaging, for the politicians or those who are elected. And I certainly understand that position in terms of, I've never been mayor, I've never, been in that position, but I would understand that there's a large learning curve. As a matter of fact, in terms of one of the things in four years, uh, the, o the only person I think that testified that I thought gave a valid reason for having four years was the town clerk. Mm -hmm. I think they just have so much to do and are so vital to the city's, what the city has to do that, that they, really, they really should be for four years. But having said that, when you look at, as a whole, a number of these changes, we have taken, uh, moving into four years, but we have no recall. And, I, and a number of, if you look across the state in the 169 towns, 
although a lot of towns are going towards four years, they do have recall positions or some type of, of, of that. I, I think we owe it to the voters, the people, the taxpayers, because I think that's a better way to address than they are taxpayers, to reduce the amount for the referendum to 5%. Um, one of the problems with reducing that number is you get now this band of 5% could effectively be an obstacle to the to the uh, legislative process <coughs> by referendum everything and everything going to... I, I don't see a gang of 3,700 people getting together on every single ordinance. I just don't <laughs> see that. Um, 3,700 is a number of, 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 of 5%. So I'd ask the commissioners to, to, to look at that provision. Uh, everything that we've done has made being in this government much more comfortable for those who are running it. And I think it's time that we maybe gave back a little bit. And this is the only place that I could see. <clears throat> I really want to readdress the four years, uh, the, the staggering and, and everything that came with it. It was not worth it to me. But having said all that, maybe if we move from 15 to 5 percent, it really is 3,700 people. And I would challenge, I challenge myself to go out and get 37. I mean, I've been on the I've been on a, uh, I've had to go out and get petitions and I think I had to get 25 and I was crying the blues of going <laughs> knocking on doors and, and so 3,700 people is a lot. I think we owe it to the taxpayers that we give back just and it's a very small thing because what we're asking them to do then to fight the legislative process by going out and collecting the 5% within the 30 days but that's what I would, I guess I would make a motion that we would <coughs> we would uh, remove the 10% and, and make it 5% and try your minds to see what the commissioners feel. Okay, a motion's been made that we take section 3-11 and change the 10% to 5%. Is there a second? I, I just want to have a little more discussion on that. Uh, commissioner, then you need um, a second to discuss it, yes? Yeah, I do, I'd like to. So we have a motion and a second. Yeah. I'll second it, uh, but I want to discuss it a little more. Uh, Paul, did you say that 5% is 3,700, or is that your understanding? What was it? It's more like 1,500. 10% is 1,800. 10% is 1,800. Right. 5% is 1,700, 3% is 1,800. I think it applies to 1,700. Okay, that's why. I, I don't think there's a gang of 1,700 folks who are going to go out and try to run this city. God bless the way Bethel does. You know, I don't, we don't want to get to that point. We don't ever want to get back to it, but I just don't see that happening. Okay. Oh. Any any other comments? Um. <clears throat> Anybody? Mm -hmm. I disagree. I disagree because we have made this <coughs> so we, we've added so much. We I, I feel that we have. Um, We've gone section by section, and we have really cleaned things up and eliminated things that were ambiguous. And you know, I don't think anybody's really pleased with this and say, "Oh, I found a loophole here, a loophole here." So we have to do it. Any other comments? Well, I would agree with Mary. I think that for uh, the referendum, uh, we have given the power in the city to our council and our mayor. And what we're looking to do here is to take away some of their power so that people in the town who might not agree with a position taken by the mayor or the council can more easily overturn their decisions. And I think that, that you need to have a lot of people. And I don't think 5% of the population in this, uh, excuse me, of the electors in the city is enough to try and overturn a decision made by the mayor or the council. I think you need to have a larger group of people who are involved and upset with what is happening. 5% of the people is nowhere near enough as far as I'm concerned. Plus we've already compromised it down. 
down to 10. Can I ask a question about this? Assuming it's either 5 or 10 percent, um, must be filed um, 30 days after publication of any ordinance asking that the ordinance be submitted to the voters of the city at its re next regular or special meeting. The ordinance shall be so submitted and in such event it shall not become effective unless a majority of the voters voting at such meeting vote in favor thereof. In effect, if we had 1,700 people sign a petition to revote this, we have to. F that's not a normal election that we're having. No, no. It, it's a these, special meeting. Where these we referenda are called special city meetings. Right. <coughs> it's like code. It's and what code? Okay. Special okay. election. Special so it is a special election. election. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's what you would call an election. All right. Just it's curious. A special election. So right. we would require Maybe a special election for a referendum. Yes, on, on or, or, or it could a be a, a regular for, November. For virtually ballot. for any ordinance passed by the city, not just funding ordinances, any ordinance. Any this this referendum ordinance language ordinance. applies to any anything. Okay. Ordinance. Okay. Any ordinance. Okay. Any other questions? And, you know, just let me Mr. continue King. on this for a moment. Then the ordinance would not go in effect until after the citizens have an opportunity to vote either up or down. That's correct. So this could be six months. Well, it's 30 right. days so, for the signatures. Right. Right. It doesn't say any time about when the special meeting or election could right. be. But by the time you schedule that, set you by could state be law, I'm sure, right? looking out, you know, several months anyway. But you know, uh, I think if you're if you're doing a bonding thing or if you're doing some special act, that if uh, that you know, is that an act? A reasonable amount of time for an ordinance to become effective depends upon the issue, I guess. Um, Rick, I just want you to uh, just to confirm an understanding I have, and and I mean perhaps the other members of the commission aren't, aren't necessarily aware of this. Let's just take the ordinance that adopts the city budget, which is probably the biggest one. Mm -hmm. If if there if there were a call or a vote, and the vote, <coughs> you know, let's say the petition was filed, and and there was a vote, and they shot down the budget. Uh, what budget would be adopted, Mr. Gottschalk, at that point? This is a quirk with respect to the budget ordinance right. only. But w what happens is if the council fails to adopt a budget by May 15th, then the mayor's budget becomes the budget. The bu In other words, the budget that the mayor proposed to the council becomes the budget. And if you uh, have a petition that prevents the council's budget from being effective because it short circuits this process and May 15th comes around courts have held that the mayor's budget then becomes the budget and that in fact happened in the city of yes Amber. it did yes it did so so really my, my point in, in asking him to explain that is that that this is never going to be the Bethel situation you know to use the local example in our area um, because of the budget I mean the but the budget ordinance is perhaps the biggest ordinance uh, that the city uh, regularly gets involved with that might provoke the type of outrage that I think Joan was talking about. I mean, this is, uh, this referendum is, is for like uh, electoral outrage. People are outraged. They're upset about a particular thing. And if we think back, other than the budget, I think the last ordinance that came down the pipe that might be close to this would have been, I think it was, might have been the parade ordinance that the, the city, mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. passed that could have come close to this, where there was a level of outrage in the community that people would have signed or been aware enough to sign a petition. Um, and, and that threshold has been routinely very high. And, and I agree with uh, um, uh, Paul that, that you know, maybe it was at 15% because you know, the, the old mayor and the council people, every two years, we'll get them. If you, you know, if you had that kind of outrage, you'll remember those people in two years. But four years is kind of a different thing. It does change the balance of power a little bit. Um, I don't know about 5%. I'm a little leery to do that, uh, even though I know that the annual budget ordinance, you know, if, if, the, if the population signs a petition and they have a referendum and they defeat it, they really haven't accomplished anything, you know, effectively. What it would apply, though, to bonding? Correct. They could end the bonding. Yes. Yes. You, could, you could, in yes. effect, come in under You could stop the project. Absolutely. You could stop. Yeah, the it would never be a vehicle for the budget yeah. challenge. That's right. It just yeah. never would. So That's I right. don't think it's. Yeah. Mayor? Who I'm sorry. competent mm -hmm. could we get to run 
for city council if we told them that 5% of all of us could overturn whatever you say? I mean, the, the point is... We're no, 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 no. I, I don't mean to interrupt. Okay. The only thing they're doing is putting it to referendum. Okay. They're not overturning. It's I don't, small, it's all they're doing is asking for a vote. That's all. Okay. Those 1,700 are asking for a vote. That's the... And then we all get to vote. Okay. Then all it goes to the electors. So I don't mean to... Okay. I just don't want you to... Yeah. I say leave them alone. Yeah. Mr. It may not change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. But I don't want you to think let's that have, let's have a 1,700 city council, can go... City yeah. council, we're going to ask you, you know, give an enormous part of your life, come sit on the council and make ordinances and do things and run the city. But 5% of the people are going to be able to slow you down and... And set up a referendum, and, and you know, if, you know <coughs> I, I just think it's too few people. Bob, no, uh, mm -hmm. did you have something you were going to say? I, no, I just had a question on this budget thing, and it's really off subject to this. I'll ask it. Okay, let's. <coughs> any other questions or comments? Because I'll try to mind it. The motion's been made and seconded that we reduce. Um, in section in section 3-11 the referendum requirement from 10% of electors down to 5% of electors all in favor of reducing uh, please raise your hands we have one vote all opposed motion fails so a good try though thank you Paul um, okay Anything else in here that we would like that we would anything else that we would like to revisit, <laughs> or someone you'd like to get even with? I can no. tell you who was for what, and we can go after him. Paul gave me a nice calendar. Now he wants it. Well, well no. yeah. Paul, I've been that's in the same position. That's the problem. That was, that was, that was, the that was, was the fact that that was a, it was a good discussion. Thank you. Anything else in here that you'd like to review? Did we? Are we the vacancy thing is. We're just like, going to leave it alone. Unless yes. you want to make a motion. It's a bit complicated. We, we will have a chance to revisit that because, again, the process is, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Gottschalk, this now goes to the council. Council is going to look at it, decide what they like or don't like about this, send it back to us, possibly, or oh, throw the whole thing out. <laughs> Do you know something I don't know? <laughs> in my sense I don't is know this anything you don't know. <laughs> 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 um, and then we could change any provisions that we wanted at that point in time. Is that, or am I wrong? The way, the way this is going to happen, if if you should uh, decide tonight that you're done, at least for the time being, is this will be submitted to the Common Council. The Common Council will then have a period of time, I believe it's 30 days, to review it, hold a public hearing, and make recommendations for any changes that they'd like to see in your draft back to you. And, and then the, the statutes say that they shall confer with you with respect to those recommendations. Then, it, then the ball shifts back here. You <coughs> consider uh, those recommendations. You can choose to make changes to your draft report or not. And then you prepare a final report, and that's submitted back to the Common Council. At that point, the Common Council can accept or reject any or all of the okay. proposals that you've made, and and with respect to those that have been uh, rejected, there can be a petition drive to reintroduce sure. them. Now we need ten percent. Fifteen. Oh, oh, it's fifteen. <laughs> With respect to the, the uh, portions that they favor, they can choose to present them to the voters or uh, one or more questions. Okay. So I will ask the commissioners. This has been so much fun. Are we going to keep working at it or are we done? We're done. Can I can I have a motion that we accept our draft draft version three as our version of the charter revision for 2008? So moved. Motion has been made by Mr. Second. King, seconded by Mrs. Mead. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will try your minds. All in favor of accepting the draft pr version three, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries unanimously. What do we do next? We're done. 
Well, wait, 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 wait. Not exactly. Um, at this point, um, I, I, we have to convey the approved draft to with, with that with, with uh, an enclosure letter at least or a cover letter to the city clerk. Uh, Can we just give it to Joe? <laughs> He's here. No. See, that's what's wrong. It's not efficient. No, no, you don't want to hand it to him tonight. We were changing the draft. And the town clerk. Town clerk Joe. But we are going to submit this on the 29th of December, correct? Correct. That's correct. And what does that mean? Submit it. That means I file it there. Okay. Yes. As of the 29th. That's correct. Okay. Fine. The idea. You, you understand this. You might want to address this to the president of the council. Why the 29th? Oh, the 29th. Why are we doing this the 29th? Yes. We're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it late in the month because the council has only a limited window in which to consider it, and and the thinking was back a couple months ago that you didn't want to burden the common council with the holiday season, which was going to mess up there. I remember that. And one of the things is if you give it to us now, we'd have to settle it by the seventh of January. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. And by submitting it on the 29th, does that mean we go to the council meeting? We simply mail it and postmark it at that point in time? What are the specific logistics of getting it to them on the 29th? Uh, what you have to do is you have to get it to the town clerk. Okay. And, yes. and because of our structure of government, uh, it makes eminent good sense to give a copy to the city clerk as well. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can do that. Has everybody looked at the letter? that I had emailed you and that and I handed out tonight slight changes to it I would like to thank the authors involved Mr. Gottschalk <coughs> wrote most of it and Mrs. Mead corrected it <laughs> somewhat inelegantly I might add oh, oh. <laughs> but we have real words in it <laughs> what she meant well. not made up words <laughs> so <laughs> if you're happy with oh. that <laughs> Right. Reminds me of business speak, you know, where you convert a verb into a noun just for the heck of it. All right. Would anyone, does anyone want to add, add, or, add or change anything in, in those letters? There, there's no real pride of authorship so much as, is it efficient? Um, do you feel we need greater um, explanation of what we did and didn't do? Yeah, it's fine. I think that oh, may be asked verbally. Not do you think we need anything more in here? I mean, I'll read it. I'll take it. No, I think it's fine. It's a starting point. They can invite us in if they would like to talk to us, or they could just watch Lynn's TV show, where it was all explained <laughs> eloquently. <laughs> Mary. I make a motion that we approve the letter. I second. Motion's been made and seconded that we approve the letter. Um, any discussion draft, on that? Draft four draft of four. the letter to draft three of the <laughs> charter. That's right. <laughs> and I will. To be coming back in 2000. I'd like to just remind everybody that the word in there is renumbering as opposed to whatever the elegant, <laughs> oh. whatever the elegant language was. Should we should I add one sentence in here that would be glad to volunteer to for the next charter revision? <laughs> yes, yes, oh, yes no, you no. may. I would also add the only thing I think well, if what I didn't do that yes, I would like to do is I do think I do think that letter besides my signature we should have the names of all members on, of the commission included on that so I think we would do that any other questions or comments about that I would ask the secretary to add everybody's names yeah below your name would be appropriate. Okay. Members of the committee. <laughs> any, any other points of discussion? And you all want to keep renumbering as opposed to where appropriate numerical redesignations have also been shown? My letter said numerical redesignations were shown. Give it up. Okay. All in favor of sending the letter as is with, with the additional names of the commission members on it, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Anything else to come before the commission? I would like to make one statement. Mr. King. I want to thank everybody at this table. It's been, you know, a, uh, a real exercise uh, over the past 16 months. And I've enjoyed everybody's participation in this. I think you're all 
a, a great group of professionals and very thoughtful in what you've done. And it has been an honor and a pleasure for me to sit in on this commission. And uh, I know I've been uh, controversial at points in terms of wanting this thing to continue to the wee hours of the morning, which nobody <laughs> wanted to do. But I can understand that. But again, thank you very much, and it really has been an honor serving with y'all. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Miss. He's and talking like he thinks this is over. And <laughs> it, is, it is not over. Trust me, the council is going to get back to the point. It's not. It's right. it may be the last time we're all together. It, oh, no. We will all be together at least one more time. Well, A motion's been made and seconded. Did we vote on adjourning? No. All in favor to adjourn, aye. say aye. aye. Opposed? I oppose. You guys sure know how to throw.